In this video, we're gonna take a look at the October 2020 updates to Lightroom Classic. Uh, every October, November-ish, Adobe has Adobe Max, hence my Mac shirt on right now. And, uh, and they, do, they do updates across the board to all the versions. When it comes to Lightroom Classic, which is what this video is on, um, we do have a new version number just to confuse us. It's not a whole new version of Lightroom. It's not really that much different from the previous version, but every fall they tend to give you a new version number. So uh, we got updates throughout the year. So we do have a few updates this month, but again, keep in mind that, that you do get updates all year long. So it's not like it's a whole new version of Lightroom that you have to learn. Um, as far as that goes, when you do go to your Creative Cloud updater, uh, the first thing to know is that you can update this Lightroom Classic will actually replace itself, okay? And it's a little bit different from Photoshop. Photoshop, you actually have to go back and remove the old versions. You don't have to do that in Lightroom Classic. Uh, Lightroom Classic 10 will actually replace Lightroom Classic 9. It keeps it a little bit easier to manage. You won't have multiple versions of Lightroom floating around your computer, okay? Before we get started, it is Adobe Max week. I have a class there, so if you are uh, attending, it's virtual and it's free, so you can swing by their website, check out the session catalog, and, uh, and stop in and say hi to my class. I already got thousands of people signed up, but it is free. I'll be in the chat room answering questions, so come on in and say hi. Let's get to the new features. Uh, the first one is really just an upgrade note to make, and that is every year when Adobe does uh, an upgrade to, to Lightroom or a bigger upgrade, um, you generally have to create a new catalog, okay? It's got to upgrade your catalog, and, and this one is no different except they have added a feature in here. If you go to your catalog settings, uh, it's under the Lightroom menu on a Mac, edit menu on a PC, you could see the name of your catalog. Well, if you haven't upgraded yet, you probably have some catalog that you named eight years ago with a three, a four, a five, a six, an eight appended to it because you never got a choice and now you do get a choice. When it's going to do your catalog upgrade, it'll leave your old catalog intact and it'll make a copy of it and make a new catalog and at least let you name it. So that way, as you're looking through old catalogs, you'll know which one you can delete because you can put version 10 or whatever the default is and you can delete the old catalogs. You don't need to keep them. Uh, all you need is that newest catalog that you create. And of course, now you can give it a name. So it's a little bit easier to find. Just a small change, but uh, I have seen a lot of questions on that over the years. So the first thing that I'm going to cover here, is it's going to be really hard to demonstrate on screen because Adobe is saying that there's been a great deal of performance increase. Now, this is October of 2020. Earlier in 2020, Adobe did an update that was a huge performance boost inside of Lightroom. And I heard from people across the board saying it was it was literally night and day of a difference. So they already did, a, I think, a big update in 2020, but they're saying there's still more performance increases. A lot of things have been moved to the graphics card. So I'm using an iMac that's uh, 2016, summer of 2016, so almost four and a half years old, 64 gigabyte RAM, whatever the specs of a 2016 iMac were. But here's one place where I noticed it. Scrolling through, especially if you've got a lot of folders and collections like I do, scrolling through this whole panel, okay? So right now I'm scrolling through and it'll scroll, it's probably making you dizzy, but it'll scroll as fast as I can go. Whenever Adobe says that they're, do they're doing a performance update, I, do a I try to record myself doing some of the things that they said before I do the update on the same computer. And so I'll put that recording now of me scrolling. All I can say is it felt sticky at times. It's the best word that I can use for it. just felt a little sticky and now it doesn't feel sticky at all. So if you haven't updated, maybe try some of these things. Scrolling through the grid is supposed to be faster. It was pretty fast for me before, so I don't have a problem there. And then in the develop module, they say the brush, the gradient and the, the radial gradient and the linear gradient have been moved to the graphics processor. So they should be faster. Again, me personally, I didn't have any problems with it. It was it was fast. I tried it out before I did the update and I, I went in here and I tried it out after and it's it doesn't feel any different to me. It's still pretty fast and zippy. So but something to consider, you know, maybe do a, a quick test before you upgrade if you're watching this video and then give it a try after. Next thing we got here is, uh, is, is we'll talk about zooming. So they've added a couple of quick zooming options. Um, number one, if you were to go look in the top left corner, of Lightroom, and this is pretty much regardless of, of what area you're in inside of Lightroom, the navigator is always there. So it's just laid out a little bit differently. You still have fit and fill, but what you also have now is a 100% option, which is nice, because then you can just click that 
and you can zoom in to 100%. And then you just go click back here and go back into the fit version. And then they've relayed out the, the zoom percentage a little bit. So now you have little increments below 100%. Got 100% and now you've got different increments above 100%. So simple little change. Now on the same topic of zooming, if you were to be looking at your image here, let's say we go into the develop module and we want to zoom into our photo, we've got a couple of options. Uh, one would be hold down the shift key. When you hold down the shift key, you're going to see a little magnifying glass that says you can drag it to the left or to the right. So now I can drag it to the right or back to the left to zoom in and out. Command or control plus or command or control minus also still work. And then you could do a box zoom, which is you hold down your command key on the Mac or your control key on the PC, hold that down, put the little box on there, and then you can just click and drag around an area that you want to zoom into. And it makes it a lot easier to get into the specific parts of the photo that you want to. Next up, we have color grading, but before we get there, a very quick word from our sponsor, and that is, if you like Lightroom and you wanna learn more about it, I actually have a course called the Lightroom System. It is as big as my capstone Lightroom course. It covers everything from uh, importing, organizing your photos, to developing, advanced editing, uh, all the different ways to share it. It even covers the Lightroom ecosystem and all the different versions of Lightroom um, on, on how they work together and how you can share you know, photos from one version to another one. So you can swing by mattk.com slash Lightroom system, find out more about it. It was completely re-recorded this year and it actually is updated and I constantly keep it updated. So uh, one of the sales that I run is when you purchase during one of these big uh, Adobe updates, uh, I give people a one year of free updates. So uh, you don't have to worry about your course being um, you know, not useful to you after the next Adobe update. So uh, you'll get one year of free updates. You can watch it online or download it. Again, you can find out more over on the website. Okay, back to our story here. Let's talk about color grading, probably the, the biggest of the uh, October updates that we have here. And as you look over at your panels here, you're gonna see a color grading panel that we have there. Okay, so you can expand that. So color grading, let's switch to a different photo here. Color grading has replaced split toning, okay? Split toning, we, we technically had something close to color grading inside of Lightroom Classic all along. It was called split toning. And what you could do is you could tone the shadows and you could tone the highlights. And you could add a color tint to it and you can control the amount of saturation, which is essentially what these two circles down here are. Full color grading usually involves midtones, and it usually involves giving you a couple of different ways to blend them. So they've just expanded on this. Uh, if you check this out, the way it works is is now you can now you can tone your midtones, your shadows, or your highlights. You tone them with a color, and then you can control the intensity of that color. All right. So we have our midtone uh, toning option that we have here, and then you can just drag this middle little icon. And then you can just move it to a color. This is going to tone the midtones. Okay. It's going to give them, I'll give them a bluish color in this example. And then how far you go in or out determines the saturation of those colors that you have here. All right. And then you'll see right below that you actually have a little luminance option as well. Okay. So the luminance is set to zero. You can make those tones a little bit darker if you want to or you can make those tones a little bit brighter if you want to, and you can always double click to set it back to zero. And you can even click the little eyeball that's right below it to toggle it off and then back on. So we have now tinted our midtones with a bluish tone that we have here, okay? Uh, another thing that you can do is once you, a uh, little keyboard shortcut for you, is once you settle in on a saturation percentage, if you hold down your command key on the Mac or your control key on the PC, It'll put another inner circle in there. Now you can drag that around, okay? Now you can drag it around and you can just try different colors at that same percentage because it would be kind of hard to, to go in here and, and you know, keep it in there and drag it around and keep it at the same percentage. You get a little bit, um, you get a little bit different to do it that way. Another thing you can do as far as keyboard shortcuts go, if you hold down Option or Alt, you can just slow down the amount that you can drag it, which actually makes it easier if you did want to go around, but it just won't respond quite as quick, all right? So this is without, and you can see I can move it around pretty quick, 
And then when I hold down my option or alt key, now you can see I'm not, I'm dragging the same speed that I was before, but it's actually going a little bit slower as I drag. Okay. So a couple of little keyboard shortcuts for you. And there's one more, which is the shift key. So now let's say we go and we drag around and we get to a color that we like, and we want to just keep that color, but just change the saturation or intensity of that color. If you hold down the shift key, now you can keep on that line. You'll see it'll put a straight line there for you. And now you can keep on that line and change your color. So a lot of little options there on what to use it for. But the whole point here is that we've tinted our midtones. We can come down here, we can tint our shadows. We can color and tint our highlights. Same controls apply to all that, but that's really much like split tone that we had. We've always had shadow and highlight tinting. Midtones is really the newest one here. We do have a couple sliders down here, blending. So what blending is gonna do, is it's gonna blend those colors more toward the shadows or more toward the highlights, okay? But it's actually gonna blend the colors together too. So you're gonna get a little bit of a mixture of the different colors had you added multiple colors here, which we can go do. You're just gonna get a little bit of a mixture as you blend toward the shadows and highlights, but still keep colors. Balance is gonna say, hey, you know what? Balance everything that I've done more toward the shadows or more toward the highlights. But as you do that, you're not necessarily blending the colors as much as you are removing them from the highlights as you go more toward the shadows or removing them from the shadows as you go more toward the highlights. And then the options up here at the top are just gonna give you different ways to view. So if you wanted to just view the shadows, just view the midtones of the highlights or view all three like that. So. Again, very similar to, to something that we've had all along, but uh, a couple of additions and a couple of interface tweaks to help you get uh, a little bit more control for your color grading. Lastly, if you come up here to the file menu, we have had tethered capture for, for quite a while. I'm not gonna go into it. All I'll say is that there is now a live view for Canon cameras, okay? So uh, you can go into a live view area when you're doing your tethered capture for Canon cameras, and uh, a lot of Canon shooters have been asking for something like that. And then, of course, all of your usual um, camera updates and everything. So the best thing that I can do is point you to Adobe's What's New in Lightroom Classic page because it's got an area that tells you about supported cameras and lenses and all that stuff. And the way that I got to this page is I went to Google and I typed in What's New in Lightroom Classic and it took me straight to this page. So uh, hopefully if you have any other questions about things that I didn't go as in depth here, uh, especially new cameras and lenses, all that information will be right there on that page.